Welcome to Expert Talks by Kalkine TV. I'm Sage, and today's guest is Mr. J. Deep Corder, founder and CEO of Launch Nodes. Can there truly be a superior blockchain over many? And more correctly, will Ethereum ever de dethrone, beg your pardon, Bitcoin as the largest crypto by market cap? Well, analysts are seeing an increased institutional investment for Ethereum. And for some background, Launch Nodes provides beacon and validator nodes in AWS. For those who don't know what AWS is, it's Amazon Web Services, making it easy to stake Ethereum securely and at scale. And they provide consultancy and professional services through AWS Marketplace to support clients staking Ethereum and building decentralized finance or DeFi solutions. So excited to bring you live today for a bit more knowledge into this expanding emerging tech area. We have Mr. J.D. Corder, founder and CEO of Launch Notes. And hopefully I'm saying your name correctly today. J.D., welcome to the show. Hi, thank you very much. Yes, you are. Perfect. Well, we better make the most of our time together. Prices of the majority of cryptocurrencies are witnessing somewhat of a downward slump over the last week and even month for some, with the global crypto market cap being uh, dipping, losing 2%, down to 1.62 trillion US dollars approximately. This was on Friday. Do you have any reasoning about why we're seeing some sort of a flash crash in the cryptos at the moment? Um, yeah, I think that the crypto markets are now no longer the tiny niche that are divorced and unconnected from the rest of the uh, economic news and global um, events. So whether it's uh, political tension in Ukraine, whether it's um, the threat of higher interest rates, these affect all markets and all asset classes and crypto it, and no, is no different to that. And in fact, what we're seeing is is that crypto currencies, in some extent, look a little bit like a technology stock now, um, in terms of a high risk asset that feels challenged by a higher interest rate from the Fed. Right, that's very interesting because that sounds like the basis of an economic model and that the concept of price doesn't really have a life of its own unless it's based on the value of a currency and then the value of a good or service. So thank you so much for summing that up. And Launch Nodes provides consultancy and professional services through the AWS marketplace to support clients staking Ethereum and building DeFi solutions. What would you like to tell our viewers about your services and how can they um, actually access your services too, please? Um, I think I more than I'd be oh, sorry, um, more than I'd be um, wanting to sort of uh, push any you know buy from me we're great. I think the activity of staking Ethereum is really really important. I think um, Ethereum is likely to become a general purpose technology um, and participating in the economic benefit of that. Um, general purpose technology, I'd like it to be done by as many different people as possible. Um, staking Ethereum, putting a fixed amount of capital onto the Ethereum network, generating an interest rate in perpetuity. That's that's the financial outcome of doing that. Um, and in this world, a kind of inflation proof source of perpetual income is a, is a really important thing to, to kind of in, in your portfolio, either as an individual or as an institution. Um, and we just make that, doing that, really easy, um, whether you're running one node or whether you're, and, and you're an individual or, or a group of individuals who have pulled together your Ethereum, or if you're a institution who's you know handling tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. And crucially, we think that the infrastructure that does this staking needs to be owned by our clients, not by us. We and your staking provider should not have access to passwords, something called your keys, um, or any of your seed phrases. That must only remain with you. And, and our solution is the only Ethereum staking solution that really is truly non-custodial. Um, and so that's what we do. Okay, nicely said. So yes, not your keys, not your cryptos, definitely does resonate. So in regards to Ethereum, they're burning a lot of ETH at the moment. Um, and what about the releasing of the staked 
ETH once it goes live on the Beacon Chain. Do you have any insights to share on that, perchance? Yeah, I think I think that. Um, uh, sorry, before you mentioned that, not your keys, not your crypto is yeah. is very true. But also, if you have to log in to someone else's platform to get access to your nodes, then I would argue it's not your crypto. So even if you haven't shared your keys or um, your password, if you're having to log on to someone else's website rather than access your own cloud account, then I would still say it's not your crypto. Um, going on to the point of, was it is it what happens after the merge? Is that an accurate summary of your question? Yes, the and they're burning a lot of ETH at the moment. Do you think that's having any impact on the price yeah. and the movement? Yeah, I think I think it I think it inherently it inherently will, you know is having an effect on the price. Um, I think that right now you have a situation whereby, um, you know, creating a sort of sound money model for Ethereum is is still theory, and one part of that theory is happening, which is Ethereum is being burned. But the thing that you we can't still see, and that's having a price effect, I think, for sure, and it already has done. Um, but I think that once staking becomes the you know the majority way that the network comes you know finds consensus you're going to see the idea that if you want people to stake their ethereum well then there's got to be an incentive for them to do that and that that occurs through the interest rate now if the interest rate is really really low well then the only way you would be incentivized to stake your ethereum is if the price supports you locking it away and you're earning a low percent of something that's really really valuable so those pricing dynamics we haven't yet seen kick in, but I think they will do shortly. Okay, that's great because I think at the moment to use proof of stake, the miners have to stake about 30% of Ethereum before they're able to, is that correct? Um, to stake Ethereum, you take 32 Ethereum on a validator node and that validator node connects to a beacon node. Um, and that's what we sell, those, those beacon and validator nodes. Fantastic. Thank you for clarifying that for us. It's, it's so important to raise the awareness about what companies like yours do and how you're bridging this crypto universe to the mainstream financial platforms and making it accessible for everyone. So Ethereum's moving away from ETH 1.0 to, to ETH 2.0, um, which is a great segue from where we've just been speaking. And the protocol undergoes significant changes, but possibly not all going to be done this year. We'll have just to wait and see. Core developers on the network are referring to the stages on the blockchain as the execution layer and consensus layer. JD, what are your thoughts on Ethereum's rebranding? Do you think it will impact your services uh, at launch nodes? No, um, I think that you know, changing the names of things in no way changes the the technical roadmap of what's going to be built and executed. It's just about trying to bring different ideas and frame what's happening in different language so it's easier to access. Um, and I think it makes sense. I think that, you know, one, one and two, it sort of, oh, oh, you know, do you want to be an Apple iPhone and, you know, have, you know, go up in numbers or, or do you want to actually kind of reframe it and position it as being slightly different as just a kind of perpetual um, upgrade. I, I think, you know, I, I actually don't think I, I have a strong opinion on it other than um, I, I'm sort of sympathetic for the need to do these things, um, whether it's PR led or engineering led, I'm, I'm not sure. But yeah, um, I, I, it certainly doesn't impact anything practically. You know. Thanks. And decentralized finance is at the core of the crypto revolution at the moment. So the hype says, and recently Hubble Protocol partnered with liquid staking protocol Marinade Finance and the decentralized stablecoin exchange Sabre Labs. So all these names certainly sound very interesting and the alliance of these Solana projects will further improve the user experience of Solana's DeFi community. So why are we speaking of Solana now? Do you also deal in Solana and how are DeFi platforms powering the entire crypto ecosystem in your opinion? So I think today decentralized finance is predominantly run by you know, a significant margin on Ethereum. And the reason why 
that is 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 not because you know there's uh, there's been an interview and, and, and one chain has been selected over another. It's really about what engineers can do and build. And when you talk about building, what are money markets? Um, you know, decentralized or auto autonomous arbitrage and trading platforms. From a software perspective, you need a lot of what's called maturity in the software development lifecycle. And what that basically means is a good toolbox to go to, to be like, ah, I've got a good wrench, I've got a good hammer, a drill. I've got all these tools that mean, as an engineer, when someone comes to, to sort of look over my shoulder or say, how's my X million dollars, um, I can feel confident and say, or engineers can feel confident and say, it's going great. Um, and I think where Ethereum is and where the other um, chains are is that Ethereum has a level of maturity to it in terms of those that toolbox that the other chains don't have. Now, I'm, I'm really keen to not be disparaging to anyone who's trying to build something. And I think Solana is really um, interesting. And I think, you know, the heart of why it's interesting is the idea that Bitcoin brought us um, proof of work. Ethereum and, and other chains have, you know, coined the idea of proof of stake. And, and proof of history is what Solana is trying to use to allow a larger number of transactions per second to occur. Now, everyone talks about transactions per second as though it's the be all and end all. It's important for sure, because more things to happen more quickly and at a lower price. But if you're gonna do, you know, what decentralized finance is, which is things like create money market, you need to know things are gonna work. And the way you do that in software is by having a, you know, a, a history of people having done similar things and it working and you having the support and there being this rich toolbox of stuff you can do. And I think, um, you know, Solana needs to build that um, to create the, the, the tools and therefore the trust that will allow um, these decentralized uh, markets to move towards it. Very interesting. Thank I don't you know if that makes me it. sound overly skeptical. No, no, it, you've got to be though. You have to put it into plain English and uh, weigh up the risks and the benefits. So it's very important to look at both sides of the coin, I believe. We're having to start up to wind the discussion up today. So uh, can you tell us a little bit more about launch nodes, plans in the near term and what your goals are before yeah. we go? For sure, we would like to put Ethereum staking into the hands of as many people as possible, um, both from an institutional perspective and an individual perspective. And we see that the opportunity for staking Ethereum, be, you know, the, the sort of bedrock of a whole new um, financial network an opportunity that allows people to earn an interest rate from a network that's growing in its in its usefulness um and we think that ethereum is going to be a general purpose technology which means it's going to change kind of everything that we do much the same way that the internet did fantastic yes lots going for that protocol indeed thank you so much for your valuable insights today we do appreciate your time jd thanks very much Thanks. And if you just joined us, we had a very interesting discussion. Mr. J. Deepcorder, the CEO of Launch Nodes. For the full interview, please head to Calkine Media's YouTube channel. And keep watching Calkine for more of the live expert talks and market updates. And until the next episode, stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine. <laughs>